Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now ages ago I had made a promise that I would revisit the excellent game that is the Down in Flames series Wild Blue Yonder and I had thought that the best thing to do, I've had quite a few requests for this, is to sit down and play through a sample of a campaign game. Um, and thinking over it, because I quite like a lot of the campaigns in this game, I was tempted to do a fairly simple one, um, uh, for both for my own benefit with my tiny brain and for the benefit of people who've never seen the campaign system in progress before. But then the thought struck me that actually, while the simpler campaigns, like some of the Malta ones, are really nice and easy and, and not too rules heavy, it also slightly sells the system short in that, that they don't really show you the rich depth and complexity that Down in Flames can go to. So what I've decided to do by way of a compromise is to play um, all the way through one of the weeks um, from the Stalingrad airlift campaign, because this has all the um, elements of the basic game where you basically fly missions that are for the most part, randomly generated um, within the context of the campaign. But it also shows you all the elements that go into what um, the system calls the progressive campaigns. Now, I really like the progressive campaigns because in some of the simpler campaigns, you fly your missions, you generate your victory points, and then you top them up at the end, and you see how much your actions had on the course of the campaign. And that's great, but... You have to wait till the very end of the campaign to see how you did. The beauty of the progressive campaigns is they come with this rather awesome track to show you how you're doing. So I'm actually going to start this part way through the Stalingrad airlift campaign. So a few turns have been played already. Um, you can probably see all my messy scrawl on the uh, campaign log here to show you that we're actually going to be starting week four. So the situation is, I don't know how clearly you guys can see all this, but on the um, campaign sheet, which contains most of the information you need to play, on the track, the um, near airfields have been overrun. This is bad news for the Germans, good news for the Soviet Union, because what it means is that based on the performance of the opposing air groups in the previous three campaign rounds, the um, the fate of the German Sixth Army is being steadily decided. So each turn in the Stalingrad campaign, the two sides have to resolve a strike mission against each other. Um, it'll either be a German or a Soviet one. That's randomly generated. Um, and then it's followed up by a supply mission where the Germans attempt to get um, get supplies into the beleaguered Sixth Army. Now, victory in the progressive campaign, and this particular one is achieved for the Soviets if they manage to nudge the progress marker all the way into Stalingrad surrenders. Um, the Germans, for their part, if they somehow manage to get it all the way to Stalingrad relieved, if the air effort helps Manstein to break through to the beleaguered Sixth Army, then the Germans might be home free. Um, so there's not too much to say about this. It's fairly standard fare for um, the Down in Flames series generally. You get the background text, you get a thematic map. Um, you get a very handy campaign sequence of play along with some very useful charts to tell you what's what. Now the information there is augmented and to a degree repeated on the equally useful um, campaign log. The reason this looks so messy is because I'm playing this solitaire and um, when, when you mark both sides uh, on the same sheet it tends to get a bit crowded so apologies for that but it helps me to keep track. Um, I'd like to draw your attention particularly to the aircraft available parts of the sheet. And you can see a number of aircraft have already been crossed off. Now, broadly speaking, um, as they did historically, the Germans have been getting the better of the air-to-air -air combat. They've suffered slightly fewer losses um, 
than the Soviets in the fighter-to-fighter actions, but very critically, they have been losing a lot of their precious Junkers 52 transport aircraft trying to get supplies through to the 6th Army. So, how exactly does all this work? Because so far I've been giving you a lot of chat and just waving my pencil at these two sheets. How exactly do they give some structure to the missions uh, and, and a sense of the narrative of what's going on? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend this and the next couple of videos just playing through the entirety of a week, um, which will involve flying two missions, possibly more, depending on the random event, and then We'll see whether both sides have actually done enough to nudge the marker one way or the other. So, what happens first? Well, following the uh, campaign sequence of play as detailed over there, the first thing you do at the beginning of the week is draw a card to determine the weather. Now, as the Germans are the aggressors on the Eastern Front, I think it's fitting to um, draw a card from their deck let's see what we get it is blue bordered so the weather is frost now that's an interesting change because it's been snow fairly continuously um, up to this point so i'll just record that the weather has turned to frost and that has a direct impact on how many aircraft the two sides have available now in this case in frosty weather it's six aircraft for the Germans and six aircraft for the Soviet Union. So I'm just going to record that up here. I mean, you don't have to do that, but I find it helps uh, for me as a reminder. So six aircraft each available for this week's operations. Now that doesn't include resource aircraft. It's um, aircraft you can deploy from your roster. Um, additional aircraft can be chosen, if possible, from your resources. So, we have got frosty weather. What about the events? Again, I'll draw a German card. Now, on the events table, you look at the card number. In this case, we have card 96 which reading across is a Soviet air attack on a German supply depot. So I'll just put, um, oh wait, no, that was the strike mission. Sorry, ignore me. It's Soviet offensive is the event. So I'll just record Soviet offensive. There's a little note there. So Treat the first occurrence as Mali Saturn. I think that's Operation Little Saturn. So I will just um, put a note MS for Mali Saturn, which means the Soviets get special resources um, for this particular operation. They also get a ton more aircraft because according to this, Treat as a Soviet offensive, plus add six Soviet PE-2 to the aircraft available. And you can see a shaded row of boxes here on the Soviet PE-2 available list. And there's six of them there, so I'm going to tick those off to indicate that these aircraft have now been released for Soviet operations. It's bad news for the Germans, because now the Soviets have a heavy bomber capability added. Not only that, but um, for the first um, occasion, well, for Soviet offensive, the Soviets get to fly an additional ground forces strike mission before any regular missions. Now, what that means in game terms is that there will be three air missions flown this week. Um, the special Soviet offensive one, whichever ground attack mission we draw for regular, uh, uh, the regular ground attack mission, and finally the German supply mission. Um, to make things even worse, add six Allied and two Axis aircraft to the week's available aircraft. So, poor Germans... 
the Soviet Union has a total of 12 aircraft this week and the Germans are up to eight. It's going to be a tough turn for them. So I'm just going to record that in week four, which is where we are, there's going to be a Soviet ground attack mission. And I'm just also going to determine what the specific mission is for the strike mission. Again, I'll rely on a German card. And it's number 74, which reading across is a Soviet attack on ground forces. So it is going to be a really rough day for the German army. Rough week, I should say. Let's record that that's ground forces. So, so much for the admin. Now let's have a look at what the Soviets have available. When you get a, an offensive bonus in the events, that is the first mission you play. And the Soviets have a very generous allowance of 12 aircraft. So over the course of three missions, I'm going to give in to the temptation to, um, to, to split it up into um, four aircraft per mission. So administrative neatness more than anything else, I think. So what should I send on this mission? The Soviets have suffered losses to both their frontline strength of Yak-1s and LA-5s. They do have some of the very capable Yak-7s in reserve, but they don't have very many of them, so I'm a bit loath to um, commit them at this stage. So, as the Soviet player, I am thinking that what we might want to do with this particular target is maybe use some of the IL-2 ground attack bombers escorted by a leader and wingman of LA-5. So I'm just going to record that. Apologies for my teeny tiny handwriting. So leader wingman LA-5 with a leader and wingman of IL-2s. Seems a fairly balanced attack force to me. Now, what about the Germans? They've got to think a bit hard about this. So they have, they have got to allocate enough aircraft for their resupply missions. That's the priority. They might have to take a risk and only lightly protect this first target. So what they'll do is they will just allocate a leader and wingman of the very hard worked but very capable BF 109 G2s. That's a leader and wingman. And that will be the defensive force trying to stave the Soviets off. Now what about resources? Because uh, Operation Little Saturn gives the Soviets some excellent additions to their arsenal, which they can put to good use, but only this week. So they best use them. And they've got two choices. They've got additional LA-5As with the ace pilot Zaitsev, or they have ground attack rockets. Both of those are quite tempting, really. I think... In theory, both the um, Germans and Soviets would be choosing their resources in secret. So anticipating, perhaps incorrectly, that the Germans are going to throw in a heavy defensive force, the Soviets are going to choose resource 10, which is the addition of, um, addition of Zaitsev and a... Uh, uh, pair of LA-5, so even more aircraft. The Germans, for their part, they have a bit of a tough choice. They too 
have um, additional aircraft available during Operation Little Saturn. But the problem they have is that these aircraft come equipped with bombs. Optionally, they don't have to carry them. But it's a bit of a shame that the Germans have uh, unfortunately found themselves on the defensive in both these attack missions. But any port in a storm, they're going to very gratefully accept the addition of two more BF-109s, even if they're the slightly older E model. And so they will make their selections. So there we go. We are ready, in theory, to fly that first ground attack mission. Now what I think I might do is um, just go through and fill in the rest of the um, sheet so that you don't have to necessarily watch me do this prior to um, every mission, but then... Actually, no. Strictly speaking, although it makes more administrative sense to do it all now, strictly speaking, you're supposed to make your selections um, ahead of each mission. So I've made my choices for the first mission. So the very next thing to do will be to set up my aircraft um, and see whether we have any ace pilots. So on the Soviet side, I have a total of four LA-5s and a pair of IL-2s. So let me just find those. There we go. So here is what the Soviet attack force is going to be for the first ground attack mission. Pair of the classic Sturmoviks with a very heavy escort of LA-5s. And what about the Germans? So we want BF-109G2s and BF-109E7s. There's the pair of G2s. They were right on the top of the pile because I'd used them in the last uh, mission. The E7s might take a bit more digging up. I'll just have to quickly riffle through my, uh, my German pile. So, common problem with... Uh, oh wait, no, here we go, here we go. <laughs> There's one of them. I was just about to say, it's a common problem when you play one of the factions that have a huge pile of different aircraft cards, but no, that didn't take all that long. So we have the aircraft lined up. And now let's determine the pilots. So I have here the um, air crew selection tables. Now these cover the um, pretty much every campaign that's included in the Wild Blue Yonder box. But I specifically want the Stalingrad airlift. So if I do the Soviets first, we have four fighters and two bombers. So I'll draw for the four fighters first. It's a bit dicey for the Soviets in this one because if you draw a vertical roll card, they're entitled to an ace pilot. If you draw any blue cards, they end up with a green pilot. So drawing for my four LA-5s, I get green pilot, average pilot, average pilot, average pilot. Okay, that could have been a lot worse. I'll just leave those cards near them as a reminder. 
And what about the IL-2s? Now they need an ace pilot to be entitled to an ace or any red card, which would give them a green pilot. So average pilot and unfortunately for me, a green pilot in the second one. So again, I'll leave those there as a reminder. What about the Germans? It's fairly straightforward. We've, on, we've only got the four fighters. So in the case of the Germans, if you draw an in my sights two bursts, they will get an ace pilot randomly chosen from the list. Um, the thing I really like about this uh, is that that if you look closely at the names, you get pilots who were historically present at these campaigns. And although it involves lots of searching around for specific counters, I find it's worth the time uh, invested from a historical and narrative sense. So anyway, let's see who we've got. Uh, average pilot, average pilot, average pilot. And average pilot. Okay, it looks like none of the aces are coming out to play today. So there we go. We are pretty much ready um, for the first mission. Now, I'm not going to um, make you all sit there while I laboriously set up all the planes. So I'm going to stop this first video here. And when I resume it, we will have all the aircraft set up and ready to go. And I will just commence playing the first Soviet um, ground attack mission against German army troops. So until then, pilots, um, thank you very much for following this series. I realize I've been absent for a while. So a very big hello to all of you, um, whether you're new or my veterans. It's good to see you guys again. It's actually good for me to be back on the channel. Um, uh, yeah, sorry for the delay uh, and the gap in making videos. Um, summer holidays will tend to do that to you. Uh, it's just that, that busy time of year. But I'm glad to be back and thank you all very much for um, being here, for following the series. Your company, as always, is massively, massively appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you all when we um, strap ourselves into our cockpits and take off for this first mission. Until then, thank you very much for tuning in and see you soon. Bye.